Hi everyone, my name is King IV, and this is Introduction to Python Web Scraping. If you haven't checked out the previous video where I show you the basics of web scraping, show you the find all function, show you how to look for like div classes and, and paragraph tags and link tags, I recommend that you check those out. And as well, if you, haven't, if you don't know anything about Python, I recommend that you check out my introduction to Python. Uh, lessons, I'll include a card caption uh, for each of those uh, right about now. So in this video, what we're going to be focusing on is how do you web scrape a table? Uh, so tables are, are really important because they present a lot of structure uh, to the information they show you. For example, in this table, shows you that one column shows you the player's name, from what year did they start to what year did they end, their position, height, weight. So very structured information. So we want to capture our information in a, in a very similar manner so we can use that for, for analysis. So let's go ahead and, and get started with that. So a couple things that we want to look at is let's go to inspect. So tables, obviously, you could probably expect that the HTML tagging is going to be slightly different than just paragraph tags. So you can see here that the table, all the tables ca encapsulated here. So the idea of this table is players. But in this case, there's only we're only looking for certain certain tables, so we're not too too fussed about that. Um, and then what you'll notice here is that there's a header and a body. So even within the header, there's a tr, which represents basically think of it as the row of the data. So tr means row, and then within the tr here, in this case, when it's header information, uh, they label they tag it as th, which is just table header. So that tells you that. That's interesting. Uh, but outside the header, that's really what just one part of the information. What we're really interested in is this body part is right here. You'll see that the TR will contain the table row again. And the TD essentially contains, think of it as the columns. So you need a TR and TD to isolate a certain cell value. In this case, the cell value here is this uh, particular player. I don't know how to pronounce that name. And then you'll see the different TDs. So we want basically want to be able to web scrape all this information here. Okay, so it's good knowing that we're looking for TRs and TDs and tables and, and whatnot. Let's go ahead and get started. So here I have uh, my libraries I'm using. So I've already created a new Python file. Uh, I'm going to be using URL lib, URL lib dot request, uh, beautiful soup. A number of different ones. So before we get started, uh, we're gonna create a function. I'm gonna call it make suit, and this is normally what I would do uh, while if I'm web scraping. I usually have this ready. So I'm gonna go to that page. I'm gonna go URL, and you're gonna see this is very familiar to to the last one that we saw that when I created in the previous lesson. So we're going to soup data is equal to beautiful soup, the page, HTML dot parser, and then I'm going to return soup data. So you haven't checked out the introduction to Python lesson. I recommend that you check those out. So now all I have to do here, uh, instead of typing all those lines again, or typing them out multiple times, all I have to do here is just go soup equals make soup. And then put my URL here. Okay. So if I run this, it should run with no problems. Oh, sorry. Run the wrong. Uh, it was running tutorial, which is the the previous lesson that we we're checking out. Okay. So nothing overly overly complicated there. Next thing we want to do is we want to loop through each of the rows. So how do we do that? Or each of the records. So so here I'm gonna go for record in soup dot find all and I want to find all the TR which is basically all the rows in in this particular data and then what I want to do here let's just take a quick look let's just go print oh, sorry let's go print record dot text just so we can see what each of the rows contain okay so you see all the rows contain for example here's all the the th headers right so Pretty interesting. Uh, this contains the first row of data. So you can see how 
we can capture some of that information pretty easily. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to go for data in record dot find all, and we're going to find all the TDs in here, and then we're going to loop through them all. So that's that's interesting. So we're if I were to do this, so go print uh, data dot text. So you can see here, it just shows us all the, the the information from the TD from the columns. So that's good. But I essentially want to be able to translate this into tables as opposed to printing out as as one as one big column. So how how can I do that? So one way of approaching it is I can do this. So I can go. Let's make a table here let's make a field here go player data blank blank and then what I can do here is go player data is equal to player data plus comma here and then add in the data dot text and then once it's done looping through that let's print the player data for each of the players. So you can see here, there's quite a bit of information here, but you can see here uh, each of the players, but you'll see what you will, you'll see here is, is that it's looping through uh, each of the players over and over again for, oh, it's not, it's not breaking it as well to the next line. It's just adding it, keep continually adding it. Uh, and it's adding the different player information. So okay, that that's interesting. So what what can we do to to fix that? So what what we can easily do to fix that is we can add in comma information. So what we can do here is now we can go player save uh, data saved is equal to player data saved plus which is basically just going to be this accumulation of player data and as well you'll notice here as includes extra comma here because of uh, this was blank originally but now it includes the uh, player data so what we're going to do here is we're going to start at one and go to the end okay so then once I'm done here I'm gonna print out player data saved and as well I'm gonna make it equal to blank initially there you go so now we have all this player data uh, saved oh okay we gotta reset the value of, of player data because it's, it's um, looping through so let's do that so let's reset player data is equal to blank here so I don't need this portion. So there you go. Now we have all this player information saved. Okay, perfect. So now what we could do is save this information to uh, to a file. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a header header field here. And then now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new file. Let's call it file is equal to open dot os path dot expand users. Uh, don't worry about this. Just copy the code. Basically, we're creating a new file called basketball.csv. And then we're going to enable a write back to this file by doing wb. And now what we're going to do here is we're going to go uh, file dot write is equal to uh, we're gonna be able to write this header information but first we need to encode it because of into ASCII and then we're gonna have it ignore uh, ignore errors so we can write to it without any problems and then as well, I'm going to write the player save data as well. 
Yeah, I'm gonna add in. Do I need in? Yeah, I'll add in uh, a line break here. So that's what the backslash n is, which I'm sure you already knew. Oh, sorry. I also need to import the OS library or module. And now we have all this information here. So there's some weird breaks here, uh, but not not to worry. If we want to fix those breaks, we could easily, instead of saving it here, what we'll do here is we'll say if the length of player data saved is not equal to zero, which means that only, only save it here if it's greater than zero. Otherwise, don't do anything. Oh, okay. So it didn't like that, not player data saved. It's uh, player, player data. And now you can see here, okay, it's so, oh, okay, because I don't need this blank row. There you go. So now we have all this information saved here. It's also going to be saved in the same folder as where this Python project is created. And now you can take this information, analyze it further. So pretty simple, easy way of, of analyzing table data. So you really want to figure out if we go here, you want to want to figure out loop through all the TRs and TDs and then be able to save this information to a CSV file. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.